Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post now tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 15 a.m. Central Time. Getting right into today's video, I am finally back taking clients, so I'm so excited to be working on an actual human versus my practice hand. For today's video, I am going to be sharing with you guys exactly how I do my backfill process. For those of you that may not be familiar with what a backfill is, it is essentially when you take your e-file or hand file and file down the acrylic of your existing design into a very thin layer. And then that leaves room to go in with a new acrylic design. So I am taking my e-file for this process and I am going to be filing that down as thin as possible without damaging her natural nail. I am using my Kiara Sky rechargeable e-file for this process. Along with that, I'm using their five in one bit in medium grit. Coarse would absolutely work a lot better. I just prefer to work with medium. I have my e-file at a speed of about nine to 10,000 RPMs. And for this process, I am just going in on that acrylic. I am using a good amount of pressure for this to make it a little bit quicker. Now I will highly recommend you guys to be extremely careful during this process. You want to make sure that you are not leaving the e-file in one specific spot for too long as that can cause heat spike and I'm here to tell you that it is extremely painful. So you wanna make sure you are not hurting your client. I did go ahead and switch out my bit just because my rose gold one is a little bit older. And this purple one is a lot newer, which means the grit is still there, which is gonna help with the filing process to make it a little bit quicker. I do suggest you guys change out your bits as soon as you notice that it's taking you a longer amount of time to file. So make sure you are changing them out regularly. When I was working on clients full time, for the full week, I changed my bit out about every two to three weeks, and I feel like that was what worked best for me. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you wanna continue to move across the nail, alternating from the left to the right, right to the left, bottom to the top, top to the bottom, center to the outside, all over the nail continuously to prevent any heat spike. Now, also wanna mention that during this process, you should be removing all of the lifting. This is going to be a lot easier than when you're doing just a basic fill because you are thinning out that acrylic super thin so that it makes it a lot easier to remove that lifting. Now my client did mention that she had glue on her middle fingers. For whatever reason she did have lifting and she said she couldn't take the nail off so she went ahead and put some glue. This is absolutely a no-no. Always recommend your client to not do that as moisture can be trapped underneath and cause greenies. But thankfully, she did not have any moisture trapped. I was able to fully remove that lifting along with the glue. So I was extremely happy to not see any issues. But always remember to advise your clients. Otherwise, of course, they're always going to do as they want. But for the most part, as long as you are advising them, they will be taking your advice. So I'm just gonna go ahead and file the rest of that off. Again, trying to leave it in a very thin layer. And then we will be moving on to our prep process.
Now, once I've gotten them as thin as possible for my comfort using an e-file, I am going in with my hand file. This is a Tammy Taylor peel and stick file and I am going in on the sides of the nails, making sure that I'm trying to get that shape reshaped from the wear and tear and then i am going in over the surface once again very very quickly and just trying to fully thin out the acrylic on the tip this is going to help minimize any acrylic color showing through on the new set that you're about to do so i'm going in again on the sides of the nails and then over top of the surface trying to get it a little bit more thin Now taking my e-file at a speed of 4,000 RPMs, I'm taking my mandrel bit and a sanding band from Profiles Backstage. These sanding bands are super fine. This one is medium grit and I am just going in and prepping her natural nail for the acrylic application. And I am also trying to fully remove any lifting that I may have left behind. I'm just going very quickly around that cuticle area just buffing off that shine. I'm not trying to remove layers of her nail. I just want to gently buff that off so that the acrylic adheres properly. Again, continue to move around the nail to avoid any heat spikes. Now switching over to my cuticle prep bit. This one is from Profiles Backstage. I love it now that I started using it. So I will leave that linked in the description box for you guys to purchase if you'd like to purchase one. I'm just going in around that cuticle area making sure I am fully removing any dead skin left behind. When working with the mandrel bit, they are a little bit on the thicker side so it can be hard to fully get in that area but this solves all of my issues and I find it so satisfying to see how much more dead skin I can get off of that nail. It's too late now to turn around and back again I made my bed and now I laid my head in it 
Now I'm taking my cuticle ball bit. I have now moved my e-file speed up to 5,000 RPMs. I have found that that's a little bit better for stubborn cuticle as well. If you have a little bit more work to do, always put it up just a little bit on the speed and that should help a lot. So I'm just going in and gently buffing off that dead cuticle and making sure that the cuticle is nice and clean. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my actions they haunt me and I'll never let you down. I'm no good at being good, but I never said I was. You call my bluff, I won't pick up, I let it ring. Record your voice so I can listen back again. Sorry, I'm not perfect, but I knew that I wouldn't be. Now I did take a lint-free wipe and some Young Nail Swipe and cleaned the nail and dehydrated it. However, that footage just was out of frame completely, so I left it out. But remember to clean it very, very well. Now I'm going in with Triple X Bond from Not Polish. This is our primer and I am going to really scrub that in on her natural nail and then just kind of gently bring it all the way down the length of her nail. I'm focusing more on the areas that have natural nail exposed. Acrylic adheres very well to existing acrylic so I don't have to worry about necessarily prepping that area. But I am adding two coats of that to ensure zero lifting and I highly recommend if you have lifting issues, Try a second coat and that should do the trick. Wanting down a second chance. I'm too selfish for that. I let you fall again. I let you know that. I'm no good at being good, but I never said I was. And I feel misunderstood because I'm dying hard to love. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My actions, they haunt me. Now for our acrylic application, I am using the Not Polish Acrylic Monomer along with their acrylic brush in a size 12. It is my absolute favorite, so make sure you guys check out their stuff. I am taking Dirty Mind also from Not Polish. This is a really, really pretty great. It's one of my favorites. And I am just very quickly applying that on the pinky. We are going to be doing a fun Halloween design for today's video. So I am using the gray throughout the set along with black and orange. Now for the ring finger, I am taking black acrylic from Not Polish as well, starting up at the cuticle very, very carefully, making sure that I'm holding the finger in a downward position and just gently patting that downwards and then very quickly blending it down towards the tip. Especially with black, you want to be extra careful that it doesn't get on the skin or in the cuticle area as it does just bleed everywhere because of how pigmented it is. And because it's super pigmented, I'm just using a very thin coat of it making sure that I am fully covering the nail and then adding a little bit more at the tip. Very, very simple process. Now I have gotten tons of questions on how to avoid contaminating your monomer with such pigmented colors. And me personally, I have found that if you continue to wipe your brush on your napkin, you are going to fully remove that pigment and then when you go back in your monomer, there shouldn't be any pigment on there. So as soon as you lay the acrylic, wipe it on your napkin and you should be good to go. I will try to include that in a future video so you guys can really see what I'm talking about. Now we're using that gray color again on the middle finger and then we're going to be using orange on the index finger. Thank you. 
Now for the index finger, I grabbed an orange that I had kind of readily available and I started placing it on there and it just was not working. This one is from Model 1s and their formula is a little bit more chalky. So I was like, nope, not going to use that. I went ahead and switched it out to the Not Polish color Issa Party. And I love the color difference. The orange is so much more bright. So I am definitely glad that I switched it. So I'm just going to go ahead and fully apply that. Started at the cuticle and then just worked my way down towards the tip. Gently patting it into place. Cleaning up the sides. You want to make sure you try to keep your shape as neat as possible to avoid spillage and filing at the end. So I'm just going ahead and gently patting that, tucking in the sides and the tip. That helps a lot with keeping that shape nice and straight. Now I love mix match nails. So for the other hand, we are changing up the color pattern. We're still using the same color combination. However, it's just gonna be placed differently on the nail. So we're doing gray on the pinky, black on the ring finger and middle finger, another gray on the index and orange on the thumb. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly apply that. And I'm making sure that I am applying it very thin but layering it on in the areas where i want it to fully cover the color underneath
Now I'm taking some clear acrylic from Not Polish and just quickly encapsulating this set. This is just going to add the extra thickness that we may need along with protecting the acrylic we just laid. I prefer to do this just because whenever I go into file, it will not file any of the color off and it allows me to save a little bit more product. I'm going to go ahead and quickly encapsulate them and then we will be on to filing. Now for our filing process, again, I'm taking my e-file from Kiara Sky, speed of about 9 to 10,000 RPMs with my 5-in-1 bit once again. I am very, very quickly and carefully just filing the surface of the nail. My goal is to make the cuticle nice and flush to the natural nail, along with just smoothing out any little ridges that I may have left with my brush. I do try to lay my acrylic as neat as possible, so this process is very quick. Again, just very gently, I'm not trying to remove bulk product, just smooth everything out. Now taking my hand file, we are going to finish file these nails by filing the sides, making sure that that shape is nice and straight. And then we're going to be flipping the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective and square off that tip.
Now taking my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage, I am quickly buffing the surface of that nail. We are using this to prep for our nail art. Now I'm taking a lint-free wipe and some Young Nail Swipe. We are quickly cleaning the surface of the nail. You can absolutely have your client wash your hands. I just prefer to use this method as I feel like it's a lot quicker. Now for today's nail art, it is going to be such a cute Halloween design. So make sure you guys try it out. It's super, super simple and definitely beginner friendly. I am taking the frosting gel paint from Profiles Backstage. This one is in the color neon orange. Along with that, I'm using my McCart nail art brushes from Amazon. They are linked in the description, so make sure you guys check out all of the products along with my discount codes. Now I'm just taking that gel paint and drawing on a little drip design on the middle finger. Very, very simple and super, super cute. I love the orange against the black. And then taking that same gel paint, we're going to be doing kind of a jack-o'-lantern face on the ring finger. Super simple and super cute. Now I'm starting off very carefully with the eyes. I like to do kind of a sketching motion when I'm drawing little nail art just because I feel like I have a little bit more control of the product. And not only that, but I'm also stabilizing my hand with my pinky on my opposite hand. That in combination with my sketching motion, I feel like that kind of helps me get the design a little bit more on the perfect side. And then we're gonna be doing the mouth area, super simple, kind of pissed off looking face. Make it look a little bit creepy, but it still looks super cute. Now taking the black gel paint and my nail art brush, I am going to be drawing in all of the black designs on the nails. We're starting off with the spider web on the pinky along with the middle finger and then we're gonna be adding some black drips as well just to tie in everything together very nicely.
Now I definitely almost forgot about the thumbs, but we can't leave those out since all the other nails have designs already. We're taking the orange once again and I'm doing a tiny drip design off the side of the nail. I'm not doing it on the entire cuticle area like I did on the other nails. I'm just making it look like it's coming out of the side. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other hand, just in black. And of course, do not forget to cure all of that gel nail art before you go in with your top coat. I typically like to put the hand that I'm not working on in the light while I'm working on the opposite hand. So once everything is nice and cured, we're going in with our top coat. This is a not polished gloss it. It is my favorite, leaves it super, super shiny. So I'm just going in, adding a thin layer of that, really pressing that into the nail art specifically, as sometimes there can be little divots and ridges and you wanna make sure you're fully coating that nail art. We're popping that in the light for a full minute. I like to do two minutes just to be safe. And then we're gonna be top coating very quickly the other hand as well. Once we are out of the light, I am adding some cuticle oil. This is from Profiles Backstage, and I am just massaging that gently into her skin. It sinks right in without leaving an oily cast, which is my absolute favorite. But that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a ton, and I will see you guys next time.